The NFL Draft is done and over, and I am going to be breaking down each and every team and grading out their draft. So check back every day because one team I will do every single day, and I'll have it up here on YouTube for you to watch. We'll go over every prospect that they drafted as well as some key undrafted free agents that they may bring in. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section, and I'll be sure to address them for you. Also, just be aware of my draft grades. No one fails the draft, especially right after it. Even no one in this draft is going to get a D or an F from me because they, everyone had a talent. Everyone did something. So if you think the grades are a little bit high, that's just me not going to too much extremes. And maybe in three or four years when we look back on this draft, then we can see who really succeeded and who really failed. So sit back, relax, enjoy me as I break down every single team this year. Draft expert Shane Hallam shows off his knowledge. Writing mock drafts, prospects from the best college. Breaking down tape, he might develop a man crush. Tearing up guys, taking questions in a rush. Comparisons, learning lessons. Shane saves the day, oy vey. Hulk or banner, doesn't matter. Listen, cause here's who can play. Alright guys, today we're going to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. And the Kansas City Chiefs, number five, a lot of people, myself included, thought they may go offensive tackle because it's a tough position to find later in the draft. But they went with a better pick. They went with Eric Berry, safety out of Tennessee, who I thought they should take one of the, my third best player in this draft, Eric Berry, flat out. Third best player in this draft, star for four years in the SEC, lays the lumber, reacts well, big playability, can take pick sixes. The only question I have is if his reckless style is going to lead to injuries. Really didn't get injured in Tennessee, just something that I think may happen in the NFL against some bigger players. But all in all, I think Eric Berry, instant starter, instant impact, a guy that's high profile, going to get interceptions. So I really, really like this pick. I thought it was a great pick by them. I think it fills a need and also gives you the best player available, which you can't deny. So good work by Scott Pioli there. Now, they've had two second-round picks, and this is where their grade takes a hit for me because I don't know that they really got two starters for a team that needs more players. The first second-round pick went to Dexter McCluster, wide receiver at Ole Miss. It's a guy that I thought was going to move to running back. They drafted him as a receiver. He's 5'8", very small, pretty strong for a guy his size, but is he going to get it done against NFL corners? Look, he can't be a starter. He can't be the number two guy. He's got to play in the slot. And even against some nickel corners today in the NFL, I think he's going to get pushed around. He's going to get moved around. He's going to knock him off his routes. He has good explosion, but not good straight line speed. So I think a lot of corners will be able to catch up to him pretty quickly out of the gate. I don't like Dexter McCluster. He's very small hands. He's not the best at catching the ball. Uh, he caught a lot of passes at Ole Miss, obviously, but... He drops some balls. He can lose the ball if he gets hit. I don't know if he can go over the middle. I, I just don't like the pick. I, I'm not a big Dexter McCluster fan. I think he has injury problems. I'm not sure he has a whole lot to Kansas City right now. Gives him another offensive weapon, sure. But you got Jamal Charles there. You got Dwayne Bolo there. I think a more solid wide receiver, a Golden Tate, someone like that, would have been much better for them. Then in a second, they took Javier Arenas, cornerback out of Alabama. Javier Arenas was the more talented corner, though Kareem Jackson was the better corner. Javier Arenas, undersized, not a starting corner in the NFL. He's not going to make it. He's, he's a return guy, very good at that. Maybe a, a nickel cornerback can cover some of those faster wide receivers, and that's what he's probably pretty good at. But I just don't see him making it. He doesn't have great speed, doesn't have great size. So I was a little surprised to see him go this high, so I thought that was a reach. I thought both of these picks were a reach by Kansas City, hurt their grade uh, from my perspective. Now, the rest of their draft I thought was, was pretty good. And third, they got John Osmoa, uh, offensive guard of Illinois, a guy that really worked hard at Illinois. He's a good hard worker, pretty good size. He uses his hands very well. That's what he's pretty good at. Uh, his strength is adequate for an NFL guard. His footwork needs some work. Um, he doesn't always get the best push in the world, but I like John Osmoa. I think he fits that defense. So it gives him maybe a right guard. He can come in and compete for that spot. The third pick I like a lot, Tony Milwaukee, tight end out of Iowa. A lot of people are sleeping on this guy. 
He's the full package. He can block. He can catch. He's pretty good after the catch. Iowa has a good tradition of tight ends, and Tony Milwaukee fits right in there. Now, he didn't play a whole lot of games at Iowa because he got hurt a lot and often. That's the question. But he came into the combine, showed he was healthy, very well in the gauntlet drill, one of the best I saw out of the tight ends there. This is someone that can come in, start immediately a tight end, and don't be don't be surprised if he's the most productive rookie tight end this year. I think Tony Milwaukee can be that type of player. He stays healthy. Now in the fifth, the Chiefs took safety Kendrick Lewis out of Ole Miss. Kendrick Lewis is a hard-hitting safety in the box guy, probably more of a reserve, a good special teams player. Someone that can come in on certain rundowns and help you in that way. And then finally in the fifth, their last pick, they took Cameron Sheffield. Linebacker out of Troy. Guy's probably going to convert to the 3-4 outside linebacker. I like the pick. Troy had some very good defenders. All of them fell a little bit in the draft. Cameron Sheffield, one of my favorites. A very good pass rusher. He gets off blocks pretty well. Decent athleticism. Maybe not the best size. He may have some trouble in the NFL with uh, some bigger players in the step up in competition. But past that, I like Cameron Sheffield as a nice reserve linebacker. So, all in all, I'm going to give the Chiefs a B-. minus. They didn't have... Quite as many later picks uh, as some other teams. I like the Milwaukee pick. I like the Osmo pick. I like the Barry pick. I think the McCluster and Javier Arenas pick really bring this grade down for me. I don't think they're going to be starters. For a team that needs starters, they needed to hit home runs with these first three picks. And if they did, they could have contended in the AFC West. I wouldn't have put it past them. Uh, the later round picks, you know, Lewis, Sheffield, I, I think probably more reserve special team guys. So I'm going to go with the B- minus for Kansas City. Uh, no one really stood out to me in terms of undrafted free agents. One guy, uh, Jeremy Horn, wide receiver out of UMass, very solid player. They need receivers there in Kansas City. So I could see him. He catches balls very well. I could see him uh, coming in and being a pretty good reserve player for them as well. So there you go, Kansas City Chiefs, B-. minus Tomorrow, Miami Dolphins, get ready for that one. So let me know what you give the Kansas City Chiefs down in the comments section. What's your grade for them? Do you agree or disagree with me?